Um, so I'd like to actually welcome the first um, person who will be talking, who's Minhan Dai. He's a professor of marine biogeochemistry from uh, Xiamen University in China. Thank you, Justin, and thank you, uh, the seminar organizer, Embo. And uh, today I'm going to share with you some of these uh, on the ocean carbon thing. The title of my talk is Potential Thinage Between Mitigation and Adaptation for Ocean Carbon Think. Um, hope it's doing okay. A big context of my talk is uh, uh, probably you are well aware of this, the injection of anthropogenesis the, into the atmosphere and uh, its subsequent distribution across the ocean, land, and atmosphere components of Earth system that led to unprecedented perturbation of the global carbon cycle has been ongoing since the Industrial Revolution. So the second uh, important context is uh, many countries has uh, adopted impre uh, implementing the Paris Agreement. So in reduction of carbon neutrality related emission, that will introduce another set of contribution to, to the Earth system on an even short time scale. So today I'm trying to walk you through a little bit uh, ocean, the ocean carbon thing. And uh, I will show you the temporal evolution of the ocean carbon and uh, the marine CDR, that's marine carbon dinox removal. That's a, a, a very hot topic in the field. And then try to bring together the synergy between adaptation and the mitigation. Um, for those who are not familiar with the ocean, those are the seven literacy of the ocean science. The Earth has a big ocean with many features, the ocean and the life in the ocean shape the feature of the Earth. The ocean supports the great diversity of life and ecosystem. The ocean makes us habitable, produce 50% of oxygen flux, dominate the uh, water cycle, and provide 80% of habitable space. The ocean is, of course, a major influence of weather and climate by uptaking close to 90% anthropogenic heat and 30% anthropogenic CO2. The ocean is largely unexplored. After all, the human and the ocean are inextricably linked together. Um, so I would argue this uh, a powerful word, uh, a phrase, the earth needs the ocean as life needs the water. Um, we're all familiar with the, the anthropogenic uh, CO2 emitted from fossil fuel burning and the land use change. That's the left column. And uh, the thing of this anthropogenic CO2, including the atmosphere, that's causing the greenhouse effect. And then the rest goes into the, the terrestrial ecosystem and the marine ecosystem. And if you look at track back, stay back to this uh, pre-industrial uh, 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 era, the atmosphere CO2 start from 288, and then you add up different sources uh, by fossil fuel burning, coal, oil, you name it. And if without ocean, the land thing, atmosphere CO2 now would be close to 600 ppm. That's 50, already 50% 50 higher than the actual value we are measuring. So, the land and ocean ecosystem thing is of paramount importance. Um, just these slides give you a, a, a broad view of this uh, uh, major carbon reservoir on the Earth's surface and the flux of the global carbon cycle. Uh, there are three key messages I want to uh, convey from this uh, 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 diagram, schematic diagram. When the ocean contained 90% of the carbon in these reservoirs, and the ocean was the net source emit uh, CO2 to the atmosphere at the range of 0 0.6 petagram carbon in the pre-industrial era. Now the ocean is a very significant net carbon sink. If you measure the CO2 flux, it's about close to two petagram carbon. If you add in the pre-industrial source, so now the contemporary ocean is a uh, sink of 2.5 petagram carbon per year as an anthropogenic uh, carbon sink. And that gives you another view of this uh, ocean slow in the carbon cycle. The left panel actually again during the, the last 50 years, 
the ocean absorbs about 25% of the anthropogenic CO2. And the right column tells you if you only count the fossil fuel burning emission, because on the land, the land use emission and the land ecosystem up uptake is practically offset each other. So uh, we argue that ocean is the only sustained thing of anthropogenic CO2 for the last uh, 150 years. Uh, I don't want to give you too much details of the carbon cycle, but essentially this gives you how the ocean function as a, a, the moderator of atmospheric CO2. Start with the gas exchange between air and the ocean, and then uh, uh, followed by a suite of the chemical equilibrium reactions of the carbonate system. And then part of the carbonate consumed by photosynthesis, that drives the biological pump, that's the left part. And then the solubility is driven by the temperature, salinity, and the, part, uh, the pressure. This drives the physical pump. So if you look at the, uh, the flux equation, it's a function of the gas exchange coefficient, solubility, and the PCO2 difference between air and the ocean. So if you look at the solubility, it determines the, of the solubility pump. That means the high temperature dissolves the less CO2 and uh, uh, the photosynthesis with the uptake, that drives the PCO2. So both the solubility pump and the biological pump drives the CO2 flux into the air, into the ocean. Um, just to give you a, 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 the idea how the ocean breaths the CO2. The up panel is the coastal ocean and the left lower panel is, uh, is the, it's the global open ocean. The cool color that signifies the carbon plink and the warm color is the carbon CO2 emits into the atmosphere. So there's a strong latitude pattern, overall strong, very strong thing in the high latitude, except in Southern Ocean. And in the lower latitudes, you see the CO2 as a CO2 source to the atmosphere or being equilibrium between the ocean and atmosphere. Um, with those rising PCO2 and the climate change, those are, have fundamentally changed the old marine ecosystem with current shift in temperature, you name it, warming, circulation patterns, stratification, oceanification, and the deoxygenation. Those are the, the symptoms of, these, uh, uh, of the atmosphere CO2 rising. And uh, so the ocean is, is both as an actor of the, against the climate change, also a victim of the climate change. So um, I just adopted this uh, uh, IOC, the Integral Ocean Carbon Research Report, just released a few months ago. Those listed the overarching question in ocean carbon research. The first one will be the will the ocean uptake of anthropogenic CO2 continue as a primary as abiotic process? What is law of biology is very much relevant to this seminar. And what's the exchange of carbon between land ocean continuing and how they evolved ocean over time? And the most important, how the human are altering the ocean carbon cycle and resulting feedback. So including I will touch a point on this possible purpose-free carbon dioxide removal from the atmosphere. Uh, with that, I'm trying to go into the temporal evolution of the carbon and the CO2 in primary. This gives you the, uh, 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 an idea of the two time series station. One is the, in the Pacific and one is Atlantic in the, uh, in the subtropical region. You can see clearly the degree is the, the line is the atmosphere CO2 variability. And you see this uh, both at the Pacific Atlantic. So essentially the ocean PCO2 follows very closely with acid PCO2. So that's one of the reasons the ocean has been uptaking CO2 as a function of solubility. It's an abiotic process, it's a predominant process. If you move into the coastal ocean, this is the Baltic Sea, Mid-Atlantic Bites, and the South China Sea, you see much higher amplitude availability of PCO2 in the ocean, in the surface ocean. Uh, extremely uh, availability in the Baltic Sea because it's very close with strong biological uh, activity. This is uh, the seasonal pattern. 
And if you move the Atlantic uh, in the Atlantic Mid Atlantic fight, it's much less variable. And if you go to into the uh, South China, it's a big marginal sea, essentially similar to the open ocean. So I would like to take you back to another view to look at the how the, the ocean carbon has evolved since from the pre-industrial era to the contemporary era and then into the future. Those is this uh, schematic essentially shows the pre-industrial, the natural carbon cycle. So essentially the land was a, 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 a small thing and then the organic part of the organic carbon uh, discharged from the river into the, into the coast ocean and the open ocean about at the round of the 0.6. So it's essentially those organic from the river and from terrestrial system were expressed by and essentially degassed. So during the pre-industrial era, the ocean is a source for the atmosphere uh, uh, CO2. So the red arrow, this is shows the present time and you see and so project may auto uh, CO2 fluxes, essentially the ocean becomes a very strong uh, CO2 sink from the atmosphere. In particular, if you look at the coastal ocean, the alteration is, uh, the percentage of the alteration is very big. And uh, so that's one of the vulnerability of the coastal ocean in response to the uh, anthropogenic CO2. If you move into the, the in the future scenario, and uh, you immediately you notice a lot of question marks, but essentially you continue to see the alteration of the anthropogenic CO2 into the coast ocean. But if you look at the flux number, it's much less from the now. Um, so um, in to look into the future, it's quite difficult to predict, the, but essentially the Earth system models such a significant weakening, even potential reversal of ocean landing and the future low emission scenario, essentially driven by the PCO2 in the air, because the essentially uh, 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 driver into the land and the ocean is the Delta PCO2. And uh, the prediction why it's so difficult for, for predicting the future uh, uh, trend, because one of the, is, the reason is the, the land, ocean, and atmosphere coupled system. So on the left column, you see these all the different drivers from the land, river dissolved inorganic carbon, nutrient driven by the fertilizer usage from the land. On the right column, essentially the ocean boundary will change with the exchange with coast ocean and open ocean. So in sum, it's very difficult to predict the future carbon thing. So I'm trying to summarize the past ocean evolution and the possible future scenario. Again, the human being has been doing the experiment by injecting the, the fossil fuel CO2 into the air, and the ocean has uh, been a sustainable sink of anthropogenic CO2 over the past 150 years. And adaptation of the implementation of Paris 6 will introduce another set. And we will see continued emission growth followed by the transition from the peak around 2030 and the net zero emission around in the, in the middle of the century. Then the air CO2 will peak in the two or three decades and will start to decline. So the important message embedded these uh, uh, contexts are uh, to maintain atmosphere CO2 and temperature at low level, not only does anthropogenic CO2 in the, in the atmosphere need to be removed, but also anthropogenic CO2 is stored in, in the ocean and the land need to be removed. Otherwise, it will degas back into this atmosphere. So that comes the, the, the concept that the, the, the marine CDR, marine carbon dioxide removal, essentially three, through three ways, chemical conversion and biological conversion and the physical transport. And uh, if you go, I'll give you just one, sorry, two examples. One is the chemical conversion by so-called artificial ocean alkalinization. Essentially, you, if you add the alkalinity into the ocean by using, for example, olive uh, uh, mineral, the dissolution will add alkalinity into the seawater 
and that will increase the capacity, uh, buffer capacity of the seawater and enhance the, the CO2 uptake. Another uh, example I will show you is uh, one of the projects funded uh, by National Science Foundation of China. So essentially, I have been looking, I have been looking at the subtropical gyre, I call the ocean desert, extremely autotrophic system. Those systems are extremely poor in nutrient, but potentially nitrogen fixation can be shipped in and it's limited by iron fertilization. Iron, uh, iron. So if you use adding iron, it would potentially stimulate the nitrogen fixation and uh, enhance the carbon sequestration in this. Uh, so the ratio of those iron, nitrogen, and the, uh, and the carbon is extremely important. So the, the, this marine CDR against marine carbon dioxide removal, the core benefit is, the, of course, the mitigation of the atmosphere CO2, but also keep the ocean in synergy with atmosphere in terms, in terms of CO2 level. Also, CDR in marine system doesn't consume the, the land. So the land use, it does not change. There is also co-benefit, for example, de-acidification. If you add alkalinity mineral into the ocean system. Of course, there is many issues, research needs and the policy needs in this uh, just the emerging field. So finally, I will try to put together the synergy when we ad adopt the, the, the techniques or approach and policy between mitigation and adaptation, we really have to think about the synergy and think about the ecosystem based and uh, consider. So when we reduce the greenhouse gas emission to minimize ecosystem consequence, ecosystem based CR, CDR mitigation pollutants, those are the synergy when we think about the mitigation tech, uh, approach. Of course, we have to think about the adaptation and the synergy uh, of, the, of the mitigation. So the management, sustainable climate, smart management, for example. Of course, if you look at it, it centralizes the ocean carbon ecosystem. I just to give you one uh, uh, very uh, uh, dramatic uh, example, because we all know the mangrove is a very uh, a significant, strong carbon thing. But this example gives you uh, 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 another thought about the ecosystem approach, because the, this is a, a mangrove uh, used to be a muddy wetland in, located in northwest Taiwan. And they started to plant uh, uh, mangrove in the, in, the, in the late 60s. And uh, until 2000, the year of 2000, the mangrove covered a large area. But they find the serious problems because it changed the structure and the function of the habitats for benthic organism. Most important is the sediment because Taiwan is located in mountainous river. The sediment discharge is blocked by the mangrove system. So in, in the year 2000, they started again to remove all these planted mangrove. Um, so I would uh, highlight this carbon thing is only one of the crucial ecosystem service. We have to think about the integrated ecosystem-based governance. And uh, so this is the, what's the message I want to show you for, from this uh, small example. Um, I think uh, I conclude uh, uh, by my talk with, uh, I don't want to read, read again because my time is up, but essentially the ocean has been very important, but the predicting of the future ocean carbon things is a big, huge challenge. With that, I thank you all very much. I hope my time is uh, about right. Thank you. Hey, thank you very much, Minhan. That was a very nice talk.